Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out. This is SML. Alec, what's on the table for us today? Well, Mike, today we are kicking things off with a game. What's it called, Al? We are kicking things off with a game called Hazards, High Beams, and Wipers. How this game is played is that we will ask a question, and then it'll each, each corresponding answer, you will either turn on your Hazards, High Beams, or Wipers. Question one. Who was the longest yeah. living person in the Bible? If you think it was Noah, turn on your hazards. If you think it was Methuselah, turn on your high beams. And if you think it was Hazaradar, turn on your wipers. You have five seconds. Five, four, four three, three, two, one. one. If your high beams are on, you are correct. It was Methuselah. Question two. How many words are in the New King James Version of the Bible? Hazards, 783,000. High beams, 738,000. Or wipers, 684,000. Five, four, four three, three, two, one. one. If you have your hazards on, you are correct. It is 783,000. Woo! Now, question number three. How many wives did King Solomon live with? Was it 700, turn on your hazards? Was it 19, turn on your high beams? Or was it 75, put on your wipers? Five, four, three, two, one. one. If your hazards are on, you are correct. It was 700 wives. Oh man, my dad can barely handle one. Whew. <laughs> question number four, final question, final question. When you buy property in Israel, what stays with the house? Is it your hazards, your horses, your daughter, but turn on your high beams, or your sandals, turn on your wipers? Five, four, four three, three, two, one. one. The correct answer is your sandals. If your wipers are on, congratulations, you won the game. Nice. Now onto the challenge wheel. <sighs> okay. Three, three two, two, one. one. Spicy. Spicy. Oh, no. We are about to eat three Thai red chili peppers. 50 times hotter than a jalapeno. We're also going to teach while we eat them, so. <sighs> okay. Oh. Well, have you ever found yourself stuck in a lion's den? If you have, boy, do I got a story for you. In Daniel. Turn on your hash. Oh, oh. Daniel chapter 6. Whew. So, in Daniel, ha, there was a 30-day <laughs> law set out that you could not worship any other god but the king. Whew. Now, Daniel was one of the king's uh, administrators, and he knew the law, but he still chose... Whew. He still chose to worship God three times that day. <laughs> three. And so the other administrators had seen Daniel <coughs> praying to God. <coughs> <coughs> and then they reported him to the king. And when the king saw oh. him, he had no choice but to throw him in the lion's den. <coughs> he was so... <coughs> he was so upset about having to throw Daniel in. He couldn't sleep all night. And in the morning, he ran out to him and called, Daniel, has the God that you worship save you? Whew. And he said, yes. An angel has been sent down into the lion's den and shut the mouths of the lions, and there is not a scratch on me. The, the, point, the point of the story is that David... <coughs> David trusted in God even though he knew he was going to be thrown in a lion's den. And he still trusted God anyway. And we're supposed to do the same. Da Daniel? <laughs> Daniel? What did I say? David. I said David is Daniel. And that is all the time we have for you today. We are your anchors, Mike and Alec, signing, signing off. off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know.
if you could see from out there, but from up here, both of those guys were just crying. Like tears streaming down their faces. <laughs> Pretty gnarly. Well, welcome back here to Connect Church. This is our second round here this evening, but I think we saved the best for last. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here tonight. And uh, yeah, we're going to sing some songs. I know it's been a little while since we sang together, but I feel like, you know, most of us have been kind of cooped up and singing in our cars anyways. So this shouldn't be that weird. Um, I want to encourage you guys to join in with us. You have a little lyric sheet in your, uh, in your car that you should have got on the way in. If you're wondering what the words are and would like to sing along, uh, you're more than welcome to join in with us. We want to hear your guys' voices sing with us on this beautiful day. So we're going to sing some songs. Frank's going to give us a message, and, uh, and then we're going to go on into this beautiful evening. Thanks for being here, guys.
Why don't we uh, lift up a holy honk to the Lord? Come on, guys. Come on now. Give us a, give the Lord a honk. Come on. look awesome. Yeah. Man, I have, uh, I've just so missed the, the presence of God's people when they gather in long numbers. I don't know if it's my personality or what it is, but I just really, really missed you folks. Um, the gift, yeah. Mwah! <clears throat> there is a, there, there is a, hey, enough out of you. 
There, there's a gift that you guys bring when you gather. It, it is a gift of, of connection. It is a gift of you carrying the spirit of God that lives in you and bringing that and introducing it to the spirit of God that lives in one another. And as a result of that, there is a, a supernatural synergy that happens as, as the spirit of God and you connects to the spirit of God and somebody else. We call it fellowship. And, and, and there's just something, it's a, it's a spiritual electricity. And I, and I felt it in the last service and I'm feeling it as, as you guys are here. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming tonight. I know you could be doing a lot of other things. You guys rock. Um, and, and, and I... Uh, Let's let's right now, man. I, I'm so thankful to to PB Pro Audio and so thankful to the city of Cranbrook that they were willing to let us come on out here. Let's give them a honk, man. I don't know about you guys, but with all the time that I got on my hands, I, I got a little more time to think. And lately, I've been thinking a little bit about my life before Jesus. I don't know if you guys have to think about that. Maybe, maybe you're, you're, you're not into Jesus yet or anything like that. But man, I think of my life before Jesus, and it, I was just a train wreck. Uh, the other day, Jody and I shared with our kids the, the horrible way that we started our relationship. And, and, and the mess that we caused in our minds, in our emotions, and in our, in our trust with each other, and, and to be honest, in our trust with God as well as a result, we did, we did everything wrong starting off, and it nearly destroyed us. And, and really, that's what selfishness does, right? Uh, what sin does, it, it w- does the work of the enemy for him. It, it steals, kills, and, and destroys our hope and our, and our joy and our, and our ability to really love somebody else. And man, as I reflect on God's goodness in my life today, compared to the way that it was before, it is just so very humbling, so very awe-inspiring that, 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 I mean, just the work that he has done in our lives, it, it's a little overwhelming at times because I came so very close to an eternity separated from my loving father. The, the only feeling... The only feeling that I can describe it as is the same feeling that I had one time driving back from Regina just after a snowstorm, and I fell asleep at the wheel, and I went into the prairie ditch, and then I woke up when I was in the prairie ditch, and I grabbed the wheel, and I brought it back on, and I just missed a vehicle coming from the opposite direction, and there was a sense of exhilaration and at the same time fear and at the same time thankfulness that overwhelmed me. It's that kind of feeling that I have now as I think back on what it is that God has done in my life. And, and I think there, it reminds me of, of three very specific things that I'm, I'm most thankful for God that he has done in my life. Three things that, that have made all of the difference in the world in my life. Three things that I need most every day. Three things I can't earn. Three things I don't deserve. Three things I desperately need from God. Something, something I require each and every moment, to be honest, uh, that I breathe. And, and to be honest, I think maybe some of you need them too. And I think the season that we're in, it's, it's actually reminded me uh, of, of, of how thankful I am for them, how desperately I still need them, and how important it is that I seek them from the Holy Spirit even today. I, I think we all need them to live the life that God has called us to live. We need them to traverse the difficulties that, that is sent our way. Um, we need them to overcome the issues and the problems and the trials that come at us. We need them to overcome the, the, the stupid choices that we make, the natural and selfish desires in our body. These three things are so very important that, in fact, the early believers added them into their greeting with one another, these three things. That when, they, when they would write a letter to somebody else in another land, they would start with this greeting, including these three things into their greeting. And, and, and I... I <laughs> I think that, that, that God doesn't want us to, nec- I mean, I don't think, I think that Satan doesn't want us to talk about them tonight because God was, man, working on me this week. And, and I was so uh, 
beside myself so many times. So many people were asking me, hey, what are you speaking on this week, Frank? And I'd be like, I don't know. Maybe this, maybe that, maybe this. I'm not even sure. And about halfway through the week, I, normally I'm, I'm a little bit uh, of a procrastinator, but this week I did it a little bit differently. I'm like, no, the people of God are gathering together. I want to make sure that I do a, a, a top-notch, top-tier job rather than, than slip into some complacency. I want to do the, the best thing that I possibly can. And so I just sought God on my knees so much this week. I studied harder than I've studied in a very long time, probably as hard as I, I probably should study every single week. And I was just warring for, with God for this week and, and came up with a message today that is about these three very simple things that I think are so very important that sometimes we overlook them. Uh, honk your horn if you want me to stop talking about these three things and actually tell you what they are. Yeah, okay, not enough of you. So instead, maybe I'll... Uh, Instead, no, nope, sorry, you had your chance. Uh, oh, that's enough out of you. Uh, instead, I'm going to read three passages to you, and I'm going to see if you can figure out the three things. It, it's fairly obvious. The three things are, that are the gifts that I think we need most. Now, now, Paul starts his first letter to Timothy with this very first greeting as well. He says it like this. Grace, mercy, mercy. And peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord to you, Timothy. The Apostle John starts his second letter this way with the greeting, Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God the Father and from Jesus Christ. And then the book of Titus begins just a little bit differently. It says to Titus, a true son in our common faith, grace, mercy, and and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, somebody yell out the window right now what three things I'm talking about then. What? Oh, grace, mercy, and peace. Okay, yes, you got it. Good. Uh, see, grace, this is a weird word. Uh, kind of an odd word. Many people don't fully grasp its, its two-part meaning. meaning. Uh, grace, the, word, the Greek word charis, is first of all the foundational core gift that God offers us of, of you know, eternal life with him to those who trust him. It's an unmerited gift and an undeserved favor to those who accept what Jesus did on the cross. And, and it's the same root word that we get the word charity from. Charity where it's a kindness offered to us, a, an example of the goodness of God as we believe for it. But the other side of the word is also crucial for us to understand and for us to request. It's the side of the word that we get the term charisma from. It's charisma, and it's God's power for you personally as you grow spiritually and as you grow in your calling. Even, even Jesus, the Son of God, while he was on earth, he needed that charisma. He needed the charisma. It says in Luke 2, God, Jesus grew in God's grace. This grace is, is a download that comes from God that empowers us to grow and to thrive in this life. To thrive at being his, uh, his love and his power on display for other people. So grace is, is two things. It is God's favor, and it is God's power, and we desperately need it. So how do you get it? Well, first of all, you get it through humility. In fact, that is the only way you get it, through humility. There are, there are two things necessary in order to receive charity, in order to receive a gift from somebody else. First of all, they got to actually know that there is a giver with a gift, and then secondly, they have to know uh, they have to be actually willing to receive the gift, which is where humility comes into play. L let's say that, that there was a, a, a rich, distant relative who decided to leave you a million bucks when she dies. A and this didn't come as a, from an email from Nigeria. Uh, this is a real, legit relative who, who left you a million bucks, and it's in the bank for you to receive, but you can't receive it if one... You don't know about the giver and their generous gift. And two, 
you don't go to the bank and get it. But we have the ability as well, if we want to, we have the free will to choose to reject the gift. Now, now why we would do that, I don't know. Uh, pride, maybe. I once had somebody from the church who was going to be losing their apartment uh, turn down $500 that the church was offering to give them because they didn't want to accept charity. It's the same with God's gracious gift of salvation and all that goes with it, like the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Some people will just plain choose to reject it. I had a, a young, broken guy in my office this week. He'd, he'd been suffering for, with some mental health things. He'd been suffering. He was feeling like he was being abused by some spirits uh, and had this emotional pain. And I shared the love of Jesus with him, and he said, you know what, I, I'm just not ready to receive that yet. And, and, and why he did that, I don't know. I think, I think some people also choose to reject it because they don't think it's legitimate. In other words, they don't believe. So it's one of those two things. Either they don't believe or, or maybe it's pride at having to receive charity, the, the charity of God, the gift, the grace of God. And I think that's why humility is the key to also receive the gift of mercy Mercy is often understood through, through God's forgiveness, through his compassion, both in, in justice delayed and, and, and through uh, his sentence, our sentence nullified by Jesus. To, to be clear, we, we are guilty of sin. And I don't know if it's just this, this, this COVID season that we just came out of, but I'm just more and more aware of my sin. I mean, and, and, and if you're honest, maybe you are too, I mean, if you reflect back on, on how it is that you came through this last season, may, maybe some of you realize there was a time of greed and selfishness. Maybe for some of you, it was a time of stubbornness. Maybe for some of you, there was some anger. Maybe for some of you, lust. Maybe for some of you, just a lack of love and more of a selfish kind of focus on, I need what I need during this season, and if anybody else needs anything, they're going to have to figure it out on their own. And that's, that's sin, right? Selfishness is sin. But, but our, our king and our loving judge responds with mercy when we ask for his forgiveness. It is that confidence of the mercy that we're given through Jesus that allows what it says in Hebrews 4.16 for us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in that time of need. Mercy is when we don't get what we really do deserve. You know, growing up, there were, uh, there were two times that I got caught trying to take money out of my mom's purse in order to go to the corner store to buy some junk food. And uh, we had a Mac store just down the street from, from where we lived. And, and the first time that I got caught... Uh, I just kind of denied it, and then they showed me the proof of it, and then I just kind of justified it. Well, I'm like, we have nothing good to eat in the house. Yeah, that did not go well for me at all. I got a spanking that my bum still remembers today. Uh, it did not go well for me. The second time that I got caught was a, a little bit different. I, I decided I was going to change my thinking, and, and I just admitted what it is that I did, and I asked for forgiveness. And then I received something I didn't expect, which was mercy. Even though I deserved another great spanking for acting like a greedy little thief, uh, what I received was what my humility led to was mercy. Because like it says in James 4, 6, God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. So we... We, we must repent when we do something wrong, which means just change our thinking and turn back to God to receive his mercy, which means we change our thinking and we change our direction. We go back to God and we receive his, what is it? We, yeah, I know it's, it's hard to remember. We change our thinking, we turn back to God and we receive his mercy. For repentance to be effective, it actually has to be combined with, a, with an intentional, uh, internal kind of faith, a directional sort of faith. See, there's this, there's this hyper-grace camp of Christianity 
which actually thinks that you don't need to confess your sins because you're always under grace. And, and, and although that is somewhat true, there is something powerful in pausing at the end of the day or pausing after doing something and recognizing the wrong that we have done and then, and then asking for forgiveness of it and turning back to God where he receives us with open arms. And then he heals us and he frees us from the power of that sin in order to actually change and be different, to break us out of cyclical behaviors. But mercy starts with humility. In this season we're in, each of us as the church, we just desperately need the favor and power of God, his grace, the favor and power of God, and we also need his mercy, which is the healing and freedom of God. So humbly ask for those things so that it might go well for you. You know, I, uh, I believe that this uh, season of pause that we are in before what I believe is a storm that is going to be coming is an opportunity for us to retool and refire our weapons of love and grace for the battle ahead. There is a, there's a shift happening right now. God is doing a new thing and a, a Christianity that is all about the individual getting what it is that they want is going to fade away along with those who ascribe to it. We're, we're called to individually own and cultivate and share the good news of what it is that Jesus has done in our lives. You know, the vision of this church, the way that this church was birthed from the very beginning was to introduce people to the grace and mercy of Jesus. And we're going to do anything short of sin in order to be able to communicate that. We pour hours of time and money into videos and messages and staging and advertising and, and teaching and inspiring God's people to go and be God's people. See, what it comes down to is not everybody is going to come to a drive-in Not everybody is going to click online to watch a service. We must individually take what it is that we've received, what you have experienced, and share that with our friends and family who may be headed towards an eternity separated from God. And they might, they might just reject it, or they might just maybe just not believe in it, but that is on them. Not sharing the truth of that would be on us. Not telling them that they had eternal riches and a life of eternity with God in the bank waiting for them that, that they should be receiving, man, that would just be a tragedy. And, and I get it, you guys. I, I get it, that, that weight that might be on you right now, that weight that you're feeling whenever I heard that from, from a, a pastor I get it. it, it feels like a pressure thing, it feels like a, like a heavy that I don't really like the feel of it, it's uncomfortable at best and maybe even painful, and you wish that, some of you wish that you weren't hearing that from me this morning, you're feeling kind of crushed by the conviction of it, the weight of the fact that, oh man, I have to actually share my faith. And you won't be able to do it. And you probably won't do it, to be honest, unless you humbly ask for God's grace, his power, his influence that you might share at the times that you should share, that you might live in a way where others even ask you about your faith, that you might actually uh, have a subtle, loving grace about you that comes from you spending time with the God of love so you become love. And that comes from consistency, consistently developing your faith by asking for and receiving mercy for for the stupid choices that we all make. And the result of that that grace kind of mercy faith is the last gift that we have to receive. And I want to ask the band to maybe come back on stage as we recognize that third thing that was added to that greeting that I want to leave you with today, and that's peace. 
but, but I mean peace from God. I, I mean, you can, you can seek peace, you can work for peace, you can be a, a peacekeeper, but it is only the peace that comes from God that is a peace that will surpass all understanding, that will give you, it, it, he'll give you a peace that can't be taken away. He'll give you a peace that, that whether you're facing sickness or suffering or difficulties, the peace remains. A peace that I have felt in the midst of sickness and suffering, a peace that I have experienced uh, when facing overwhelming odds, a peace in the midst of crushing opposition. Man, the gift of God's peace, it dispels fear. It overcomes anxiety, it shocks depression, and it inserts an irresistible joy in somebody, a calm that is beyond anything that you can get anywhere else. That is the peace that God wants to offer you. You need God's grace, but you got to humbly receive it. You need his mercy, but you got to reach out and take hold of it. And you need his peace, but you got to actually accept it. And so to close today, I, I want to pray a blessing that was given to us over 1,500 years before Jesus even walked the earth. Over 3,500 years ago, this blessing was given to us, and I think it is so crucial during this time. But well, you must humbly receive it as well. Will you, in, in your vehicle or, or wherever you're watching right now from, will you just accept a posture of receiving like you're about to be given something? And then I'm going to pray these words over you. And I believe that God is going to download a peace. He's going to give you a grace. He's going to extend his mercy to you. And there's gonna, you're going to be overwhelmed by a sense of calm as we head away from this place. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May he smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor. And Lord, right now, will you just give them a peace? Amen. Let's sing one more song.
so much you guys rock thank you so much for coming if you if you enjoyed this man let us know maybe we'll do another one in august uh, but we're just hoping and, and praying that you guys have an amazing summer we're going to still do church online man if you're not in a group come talk to us we'll make sure that you get into one we want to do something a, a little bit uh, cheesy and wonderful as we leave here today. Uh, we would like the back row to leave first and have them come around and kind of pull out front here and wave to the people as you go by. We'll do the second row then next and then the, the front row last as you head out, wave to people, honk your horns, see some faces and, and let the spirit inside of you connect with the spirit in them and let, you, let them know that you love them, okay? Yeah? All right. So let's have the, the, the far side over here leave first. They can come around front here. And, uh, and, and thank you guys so much for coming. You guys rock. We miss you. Mwah.
next time. Mic drop. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> That's all you get. That's all you get. That's all you get. <laughs> It's a really short song. It's like five seconds. It goes like this. One, two.